So I'm really, really pleased, and that's been a, a strong, uh, you know, part of the discussion this morning. Um, that uh, uh, collaboration with industry has really been at the heart, I think, of a lot of the achievements that we've been able to, to make together. Um, and so it's it's really with, uh, as I said, great pleasure that I want to be able to introduce um, Michael Neary and Mike Pym, who are both here today representing the Australian Information Industry Association. Um, and I think. You know, as I've participated in a number of um, activities with, uh, with Michael and Mike and uh, the AIIA team, it's been a real feature of the way that we've gone about making some substantive changes to the way that we go about engaging with you as an industry and it's important. So firstly, um, Michael. Michael's a senior executive with over 20 years experience in business and ICT. Um, that experience spans sales, marketing and strategy in sectors including financial services, government and technology. He's worked for companies including the Commonwealth Bank, Telstra and PMI, now QBE. He's passionate about innovation and apart from his professional roles, he's also completed a doctorate of business administration with a thesis on innovation and corporate entrepreneurship. And you might want to talk to him about that over the break. Um, Currently, he's the chair of the Australian Information Industry Association in New South Wales. He's a director with a number of board and trustee positions, including as a member of Sydney University's Human Research Ethics Committee. He's a fellow of the Australian Marketing Institute, a graduate of the Australian Institute of Company Directors, and a fellow of Fincia. Michael's married with two children, drives a Morgan, and lives in Sydney. Um, Mike is the founder and legal practitioner, director of PIMS Technology Lawyers with over 25 years experience in major technology contracts as a senior in-house counsel with major technology companies in Australia and Europe, national practice group leader of the Technology Intellectual Property and Outsourcing Group at one of the top 15 law firms in Australia and leading PIMS Technology Lawyers over the last nine years. Mike's been working with us in New South Wales government as well as Queensland, Victoria and federal governments on their ICT contracts for more than 20 years and has deep experience in government procurement, drafting and negotiating Procure IT and other GITC based contracts. He's heavily involved in the ICT industry, sitting on a number of boards of a number of technology companies as well as being a federal board director of the peak ICT industry body in Australia, the AIIA. So it's with great pleasure that I welcome Michael and Mike to the stage today. All right, I'm very aware we're standing between you and a break, so we'll, uh, we'll try and move along fairly quickly. Um, first, and it's been said, I, I really want to thank Paul um, and all the government team here today for inviting us. Um, certainly the engagement over the, the time has been fantastic. And I think almost every speaker has either spoken or attended um, AII events. And I think that really shows the engagement. Um, so we've, we've got two, two fronts of this engagement. We've got the, the industry. And um, Amanda Swan, where, whereabouts are you? Is Amanda here? Could you stand up? <laughs> so, so Amanda um, looks after the New South Wales Government Special Interest Group. And, one day Oracle's going to work out that she spends more time with the AAA than um, with Oracle, but um, certainly Amanda is a key person. If you haven't met Amanda, please make yourself known to her at the end of today. Um, so firstly, just want to run through um, who the AAA is, because I'm sure not all of you know who we are. A little bit about trends of the industry, because I, really that's how this, this fits together. You know, the government is part of an industry trend. Uh, we've heard a lot about systems of engagement. Um, AAR has a financial services group that's put a white paper out on that because the banking industry is also dealing with this, what is a core system, what is a, a system that maybe like mobile banking you can uh, plug into that core. Um, talk about the history of the engagement and then Mike's going to come up and talk about why Procure IT, some of the benefits of it and working together. And I've put a quote up there from uh, Peter Drucker, the, the management guru, if you want to do something new, you have to stop doing something old. And I think that's really the challenge for all of us uh, as we move into this next phase. A lot of IT historically has been moving manual processes onto a system, and that's fun because that's all new. Now we're at the point where we've got to give up something to get something, and that, that's much more of a challenge. And I think that's where this engagement and working together becomes even more critical. 
So the AAA, I won't, won't go through it all, but it basically is the peak body. The members are organisations, so you may, there are other organisations around that have individual members. The AAA has the company as the member, uh, and there's a few of the companies there. It's been around for 36 years, over 400 members. A lot are Australian based, and a lot are small and medium enterprise by number. So we're really putting a lot of focus in there, and we really appreciate, again, the government's engagement in working with small enterprise. And I mentioned the New South Wales Special Interest Group. If you're in industry, I'd really encourage you to join and come along to that. The government do put it on in the McKell building, so we thank the government for that. And if you're in government, um, Mike will cover off at the end some of the ways maybe you could engage with that group as well. The trends we're seeing. Um, we're seeing a whole range of trends, the move to as a service across the industry, big data particularly. I don't think that's any, any secret. Um, Customer and employee centric, the empowerment, how do I have something that's just as good as home? I mean, so many great cloud solutions are out there today and the expectation is where I work and when I deal with a, a company it'll be just as good. It'll be like Facebook, it'll be like uh, Gmail and I expect all that and you'll give it there and I know Richard's a, a real advocate for that. Uh, the Internet of Things, the AAA Summit this year was on that and that's really where we're going to see an explosion. Um, and the speed of change, just the new solutions. And I, I think that's really what a lot of these new models are, are looking at, is how do we embrace the speed of change and take advantage of that without ending up with systems that take five year paybacks and by the, the year three, they're, they're out of date. Um, really, the journey's been a long one over many years and particularly, I, I think, a turning point for the engagement was um, back when the, this current government first came to power with the sharing of New South Wales 2020, that led to ICT 2012, and a lot of engagement with the government, with Paul, with Pedro, with Anthony, uh, with all the teams there, um, around trying to really understand what, what wanted to be a, a achieved. And there are a number of forums there, and you see we've put some up there that have been held to help industry um, understand where government's going, and I, th I think it was really valuable then Sally running through um, where her program's going so that we can understand it and as an industry engage in that and get buy-in. Um, and re on that journey, Category Q and this whole ERP approach is the next step. And it's not always going to be easy, I think we've got to be honest about that, we are all learning. Um, but undoubtedly, part of my role is looking across the nation New South Wales is certainly the leader in Australia and right at the forefront um, globally. Uh, the, the steps being taken here, all the other states are looking at. Uh, I think New South Wales government has done a fantastic job of driving to this new reform agenda, of engaging with industry, and it really is a model uh, nationally for how, um, how other governments could um, engage with the industry and take advantage of, of the developments in the industry. Um, certainly, implementation is the challenge. So as we move from all the great work now, I think, that's been done on building the back backbone, the, the theory, it now is how do we make um, the rubber hit the road? How does this really take place in an agency? We've had the lead agencies up here, but how does this now permeate across government? And procurement, um, and Paul touched on this, procurement really is the enabler, and that's why these programs are so important. Um, it, it's boring, it's documentation, it's legal, and I know Mike's going to cover some of this. But if it doesn't happen, it is boring, Paul. <laughs> the wrong <laughs> but it is just so important, because if it doesn't work, it won't happen. And it can either be a barrier, and I think that's what we saw in the past, and a lot of the, the, the push and shove going on was that, but now it really is the enabler. It's putting together roadmaps, it's putting together templates. It really is driving change, and um, I don't think it can be dismissed at all, the importance of procurement in driving this reform agenda, because the technology's there, it's really now this next step, and procurement's vital for that. So with that, I'll hand over to Mike to talk a little bit more. Thanks, Michael. Um, so look, th this, this bit about boring legal stuff process um, is actually really important. And, and, and why is it really important? About 
Two or three years ago, um, the AIIA, some of their larger members, went along to the industry association and said, look, we're thinking of de-investing in New South Wales. We're going to be moving jobs to other states. And why was that? And that was because the procurement process was haphazard, was poorly defined, and particularly the contract on which we all had to sign up was, um, well, to take uh, one of Anthony's analogies, probably had more gremlins than gremlin too. Um, the net real result was business wasn't being done and people were going to disinvest in New South Wales. And that's not in our interest, it's not in supplies' interest, it's certainly not in government's interest. Um, and so a decision was taken to try and fix that problem. And, and that was the beginning of a significant journey because for the last 20 years the industry has been complaining in all states about their procurement process and nobody's done anything about it. But New South Wales government stepped up to the plate and said yes we're going to fix this problem. And what we found was that the, the procurement process, particularly the contract, um, had all sorts of features that didn't deliver any value. Our good friend, the management fee, 2.5%. What did industry do? We put 2.5% on the price, added GST, and then probably added a margin on that. And that was just money circulating round because we paid it to you, you paid it to us, and, and actually all that was happening was, was that the accountants had a job. Um, and, and the cost of actually engaging and the legal costs associated with getting into a contract with New South government was enormous. And pro probably more importantly, there was real big barriers to entry, so particularly for SMEs. So when you had to have five or $10 million worth of insurance, particularly professional indemnity insurance, when you were being asked for financial securities and bank guarantees up front, then that's a real inhibitor to SMEs doing business with government. And of course, without SMEs, you lose out on innovation, you lose out on opportunities, and you lose out on competition. Uh, so we, we set out with some objectives, obviously to increase competition and to reduce the transaction costs, to open the government to SMEs, um, to establish New South Wales as the leading business state. And, and one of the things that I'm really hot on is, is bringing benefits to governments earlier. If you can shorten your procurement cycle by three months by cutting out all of the argy-bargy around the legals, then actually what that means is your project is delivered three months earlier and the benefits that you get from your procurement in terms of delivering services to citizens are all achieved three months earlier. Okay, so the engagement model. This was really simple, it's 101 stuff. Government had a team. AIIA had a team. We set out a, a, a process, um, included policy decisions, procurement people and legal teams. And basically we sat down over a, a period of a year or more and we went through each of the issues that was causing the problem in the procurement process. You know, was it a process issue? Was it a contract clause? Uh, and what was the risk associated with each of these particular issues? And it was really good to be able to do that in an environment where there was no tender. In other words, you weren't complaining about a clause whilst you're doing a tender negotiation because that creates all sort of artificial um, responses. So uh, we were able to do that. Everybody was in let's fix this for the good of New South Wales and for good of suppliers. It was, it was a really proactive and uh, constructive session. And what we also were able to do as an industry association is for some of the newer technologies and the newer business process and, and as a service was really hot at that time, we got a panel of our best member AAS providers in a room and we got all of the senior people from government in the room and we said, okay, this is where we see technology going. This is what AAS is. This is what PASS is. This is what IAS is. And we had this huge exchange of information. And certainly there were a whole lot of concerns and, 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 uh, about from government in terms of should we go down this path? And there was no procurement process for even buying a, a software as a service solution from New South Wales government at that time. And it was through that sharing of information that everybody actually began to understand where the endpoint actually needed to be. We then went through all of the controversial clauses and did some sort of risk assessment. Why is this clause in here? What protection does it give you? And how much is industry 
adding to the cost of the bid to deal with that particular clause. And it was really interesting. Most favour customer clause, I've been doing this for 20 years since the PE panels and GITC2. Nobody could actually remember why that clause was in there. All the lawyers in the room from both sides all agreed that it had no value and was unenforceable and yet it was absolutely mandatory and nobody would remove it. And those were the types of discussions we had which led to an outcome or a variation or a removal. So what we essentially did is took out all of the risks where there was a disproportionate cost or that protection was theoretic and never, never to be used. We drafted Procure IT uh, consistent with the National ICT contracting framework standards that the New South Wales government had participated in a cross-jurisdictional exercise along with the AIIA and, and ICRA to try and standardise government procurement contracts across all the states and territories and federal government. So the, the document that we have should be able to be used um, across jurisdiction. Um, and we had... Um, big uh, industry uh, stakeholder consult, uh, consultation through the AIIA and its members. A and the result of this is that this document has got a very high level of acceptance both by government and industry. And if I compare that with every other state and federal government, it is an absolutely outstanding achievement. The level of acceptance of that document is, is outstanding and unfortunately has completely stuffed my own legal firm's business because now very few people come to us to argue about the terms and conditions. What we all spend our time doing is getting the statements of work right and the PIP right to make sure that the job is actually what is being bought and we're selling what is being documented. So our whole role as a, a firm has changed. And, and there is no other state or territory government where you can buy as a service straight off a standard module like you can in New South Wales. So if you think what we've all been talking about, everything's going as a service, the only state in the country where there is a standard ICT contract for that is New South Wales. So the... <laughs> yo. <laughs> So, so look, this is an engagement model that works, and it will work for that. It worked for that particular problem, but it's a it's a, an engagement model that will work for any issue. So, how can we work together? So, for the industry members, uh, industry uh, participants in the room, obviously join the AIIA. Um, you'll get. Um, you participate in the AIIA, particularly through the New South Wales Government Special Interest Group and, and Amanda, and, and what. What that will do for you is it will find out what's happening. So you can come to these briefings, you'll be able to understand what the government's thinking of, of, what, of, of uh, where, the way they're moving, and you have some ability through the industry association to provide input into that policy development to make sure that the outcomes that come out of the policy development are much more likely to actually be reflective of the products and services that we're selling. Um, Contribute to key issues, so we've had a working group around some of the standards developments. Um, we're desperate to encourage SME participation, so every time there's an issue that we find in a procurement process or a contract that's anti-SME, we try and work out how to get around that. Um, and obviously there's a, a bit of a refresh of Procure IT as a document now, and that's something there where we've made a huge state fo step forward, but there's a few things around the edges that need to be fixed that we've learned through experience, and, and this is a mechanism of getting that um, knowledge and um, outcome uh, sorted out. So the, if become a member of the AIIA, participate in these groups, and you will get better outcomes, and you will get more business. So I'd just like to introduce Leighton at this point. Leighton's just about to stand up unannounced. Um, any industry uh, participants who are not uh, already in the AIIA, please see Leighton. He's our sales and marketing general manager, and uh, he will sort you out very quickly at the end. So it's not just about industry, this is about working together. So what about the agencies? What can the AIIA help do, uh, help the agencies with? So firstly, we're kind of the aggregator of industries, so you can talk to us without this big probity word getting in the way. Yeah, so whereas you might not be able to go to a particular uh, supplier and say, look, I'm thinking about this as an idea, what do you think? probity might get in the way of that, you can come to the industry association and put that to the industry association and we will collectively 
poll our members and come back and assist you with some ideas. If you want to share a strategy, uh, we have a series of CIOs, uh, forums, um, where you can do that. Uh, want to launch an initiative, et cetera, et cetera. So please use us as your sounding board and as your policy uh, development assistant. Um, as I've said before, uh, New South Wales is undoubtedly the leader in public service IT procurement at the moment. Uh, we'd like to keep you there uh, and we're very keen to help. So thank you very much for your time and inviting us. Well, thank you very much, Michael and Mike. Um, I have to say, I was, you know, struggling a little bit with the comment about procurement being boring, but then it was, uh, you know, it was redeemed by all of those nice things that were said about the work that we're doing here in New South Wales. And, um, you know, again, I, I just want to acknowledge the the great support and work and collaboration that we've had with the AIIA and the broader community in being able to achieve some of these outcomes. So, thank you for your comments today.